Welcome to the Divorce Survival Guide podcast, where we have open and honest conversations about co-parenting, separation, divorce, and the hardest question of all, should you stay or should you go? I'm Kate Anthony, your Divorce Survival Guide, and I'm here to help you navigate some of the roughest waters you've ever swum in and answer some of your toughest questions. I've been to hell and back, and now it's my mission in life to help you get to the other side of this process with your sanity and your heart intact. Hey everyone, welcome back. Oh my goodness, it's almost Christmas. And today I have a really great show for you. I have called in my dear friend, Michelle dempsey Multak to talk about how to have a really great holiday. Even if you're, if this is the last, your last hurrah as a family, if this is your first time alone, uh, we're talking about how to create new traditions, how to set boundaries, how to not get swept up in any of the um, misery, um, that can go along with the holidays and how to really take care of yourself. So, um, I'm really excited to bring to you my friend, Michelle Dempsey Multak. She is a writer, a coach, certified divorce specialist, and you know her as the host of the moms moving on podcast. She is as a divorced co-parenting and remarried mother. Nothing makes Michelle happier than being able to guide other women as they move on through the divorce process and helping them turn their divorce lemons into lemonade, just like she did. She is a native New Yorker. What? Me too. And she now resides in Miami with her husband, Spencer, and each of their daughters, Bella and Jolie. And I, you know, you know, you better be following Michelle on Instagram, right? (laughs) Everyone's following Michelle on Instagram at Moms Moving On. So without further ado, here is my conversation with Michelle And truly, guys, for those of you who celebrate, Merry Christmas, Happy New Year, I love and adore you. Michelle, thank you so much for coming back on. It's been a while, and I'm so happy to talk to you. I'm happy because um, I don't, the people can't see you, but you've got this real good, like bright, calming Aww. energy happening. Like, Aww. I don't know what's shifted on your end. I'd love to hear about it, but maybe off camera. It's nice to see you. Thank you for having me back. Well, you know what? I will tell you because last week I had aired my episode with um, an episode of Bella Gandhi about peak dating season. Mm. And, she, and Bella always inspires me to like, get back in there. And I'm always like, ugh. And so I did, I took all of her advice. I got back in there and I had fucking phenomenal date on Saturday night. Oh, that's why there's a glow. Hello. And then I've been a a bit of a train wreck ever since because I'm, you know, I'm me and I have my, all of my trauma, (laughs) all of my, like, you know, attachment trauma, like everything just like surfaced. And so I've been processing through that. And then like, he just texted and was, wants to go and see Christmas lights on Thursday night. My heart. That's the whole episode right there, guys. We'll see you next time with an update (laughs) on Kate's dating life. I I told them I was going to give them and I'll keep them updated. So there you go. Mm -hmm. I am not a psychic by any means, but isn't it amazing how I could tell by like your smile and your demeanor and your glow that something was up. I'm God, I'm always on the money. Maybe I am. psychic. You are. I think, well, I think you and I are, you know, similar in that we have pretty strong, intuitive you know, components. And I think, I think, you know, we all do. And some of us are more maybe in touch with it or the work that we've done to like overcome all the shit that we've gone through in our lives. Yeah. You know, like we're intuitive. So I, I am, uh, I appreciate that you, that you could see that in me. I have to say that after I fell in love, after my divorce, people would say to me, you look so different and literally nothing changed. It was just the tension in my face and my jaw and my shoulders, the way I carried myself went yeah. away. Nothing else yeah. changed. I didn't change my hair. I didn't lose or gain weight. It was very, yeah, like, yeah. uh, it was just an energy thing. Yeah. Well, we shall see. I'm being very like, you know, but okay. Anyway. Well, Christmas lights sounds promising anyway. 
Christmas Let's proceed. lights sounds good. So speaking of Christmas lights, we're going to talk about getting through the holidays. Oh, oh yeah. <laughs> right. Yeah, that thing. So that thing, right? And I guess, you know, whether you're still, you know, there are people who are listening to this who are still deciding mm -hmm. and they're, or they may have decided and are kind of going through the last, their last, you know, hurrah before uh, divorce month hits. Um, which we know is January is divorce month mm -hmm. and um, other people are having their very first holidays alone or their very first holidays co-parenting and we want to give them like all of the advice and love and I don't know what do, yeah. we, what do we want to give them we want to well there's a couple of things first mm -hmm. I think for anybody listening who is either coming to the end of their marriage now knowing that this is probably the last holiday season as a joint unit yeah. or who is experiencing their first marriage after divorce, it's important to remember that the holidays are just literally two freaking dates on the calendar. There's Christmas and there's New Year's. If yeah. you're Jewish, you've already had Hanukkah, you've gotten through that. And Kwanzaa, also just a date on the calendar. Whatever you celebrate, it's just a small period of time. So mm -hmm. if you're going to put all of this energy into thinking, oh my God, this is my last Christmas with my husband, or oh my God, this is my first New Year's where I have nobody to kiss goodnight. It's mm -hmm. just a day. And you have to take the pressure off of what that day is and what it means societally in the movies and on, you know, jewelry ads. It's just <laughs> another day. So if nothing else, if you take nothing else from what I hear, what I say from here on out. Yeah. Look at it like any other day. What? That being said, there's a lot of shit that happens when it's yeah. your first year um, going into the holidays. And a lot of it, it's like, if you don't prepare for it, you could be stepping into a landmine mm. for a few reasons. Emotionally, you're raw. Yeah. The people around you don't know what to say or how to handle you. Um, invitations may flood in or may just not come in at all, both for really right. innocent reasons. Right. And and everything's just all of the senses sort of become heightened because, oh, it's the holidays and we're supposed to be happy, but we're not happy right now. And, and by the way, I feel like most people aren't as, you know, I feel like we're supposed to be happy is the sort of, you know, what, what Hallmark wants us to think and all of those things. But I think mo the holidays are, are more difficult for more people than mm -hmm. people let on. Yeah. You know, not to mention holiday calendar people like they're right at the end of the year where everybody's just exhausted and wants to be done with it already. <laughs> like, let's get on to the next year. Oh like, God, it's so true. We've Could we make Christmas in July? I, yes. <laughs> yeah, right? like, yes. Let's do that. But, you know, if, if you've yeah. gone through a divorce in the last 12 months, you're probably emotionally, physically, financially spent. And the last thing you want to do is put all this emphasis on, you know, a very Merry Christmas when you right. just want to hide under the covers. And I think the happiest people are the people who acknowledge that they don't have to be happy all the time, that they yeah. don't have to like mm -hmm. force themselves into feeling any which way because someone else deems it so. So right. that's how I feel about happiness. And that's why I feel like I am a happy person now because I've taken the pressure off of myself to feel happy when other people think I should. Yeah. I love that. And like, what is, ha what is happiness, right? Like it's kind of elusive. It's kind of personal. It's right. Is it con being content? Is it being full of joy? Is that, is, is joyfulness something that we can aspire to feel 24 seven? Like, no, no. <laughs> like no. I, I'm happy in my life. Like mm -hmm. I'm, I've finally reached a place of, I feel secure for the most part in myself. Mm -hmm. And I've done all the work to do the healing. And I love my husband and the life we've created, but I'm not waking up like whistling Dixie feeling like a joyous, like, I don't know, <laughs> bumbling idiot. Like I just, I'm not a joyous gal. I'm happy. I think there's a difference. There is a difference. There is a difference. I think that there's sort of like the internal, the internal barometer is sort mm -hmm. of even keel, right? Versus happy all the time or joyful yeah. all the time, right? Because that doesn't, that's weird. First of all, that would be creepy. And that's why <laughs> the holidays are intimidating to so many because yes. it's like, oh, I just lost a grandparent or I lost my job. Like, don't yeah. tell me to be happy this week. Right. That's right. That's right. So 
so in terms of, so it's just another day on the calendar, right? I kind of love that. Like I was talking to someone and, and who just like, you know, is I, he's going through like his second Christmas with no parents, right. Mm-hmm. And really feeling the grief. Right. And, mm-hmm. and it was interesting because he said, it's okay. It's great. It's great. Grief is great. You know? And he said, I don't, I don't aspire to not feel the grief, but he's, making a plan to, you know, have Chinese food and go see a movie with friends, right? Which is honestly every Christmas that I have to do like a big to do and I have family and blah, blah, blah. All I really want to do is eat fucking Chinese food and go to the movies. Mm -hmm. (laughs) Well, I'm Jewish and that's exactly what we do on Christmas. (laughs) That's what I said. I was like, oh, you're having a Jewish Christmas. And he was like, is that what that is? And I was like, yeah, that's what, that's what Jewish people do on Christmas. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So I was just talking about this in my membership community last night. We had a workshop called Surviving the Holidays After Divorce. And Mm -hmm. we talked a lot about traditions, right? Like we follow these traditions that have been passed down for generations. That's exactly what a tradition is. It's a custom passed down. And then you get divorced and you take a step back and you're like, well, okay, I don't have my kids on Christmas this year. Does this mean I can't continue a tradition? Hell no create your own. And some of the like best moments my child has in her life right now are of these like wackadoo things we've done that were Mm -hmm. off the cuff, but very much our own, whether it was making me a full-blown birthday party before my birthday, because she was going to be away with her Mm -hmm. dad. My birthday always falls on Thanksgiving weekend, or it was Thanksgiving a week early, or it was, you know, going to my grandma's and sitting outside on her lawn and celebrating something on a different day, whatever it was for us, it was like, let's do that. Let's enjoy it. And let's do it again next year. And that was a big part of our conversation last night was how can you take the parts of the holiday that feel special to you and make them your own with your children now that you're in this new beginning of your life. Yeah, and I, I think there's something there really, really powerful is. to and, that. And that it can be outside the box. And one of the things I, I know you often say is because, you know, in light of the fact that it's just a day on a calendar, you can pick any day right? You can pick any day. So just because Thanksgiving falls on the Thursday for everybody else, if you don't have your kids, make make it Saturday. Doesn't matter, right? Yep. I celebrated Thanksgiving last year, the Tuesday before everyone was none the wiser. It was the usual setup, all the food. And like, that was my Thanksgiving because Bella was going to be away with her dad for four days. So we did that and it was fine. Yeah. And then, you know, and I think as kids get older, you know, Bella's still little with, with Emmett, because he's 16 and he sort of, he gets, has a little bit more, like I can say to him, like, Hey, what do you want to do? Or like, you know, which parent do you want to, you know, this is what I'm doing. So this is what, what we do on Thanksgiving is I'll say to him, Hey, this is what I'm doing for Thanksgiving. And this is what dad's doing for Thanksgiving. Where do you want to go? And he feels completely free Mm -hmm. to make that choice. I love that. I have to tell you. And I, I do think I will say for the people listening that that's very much in line with how I feel about things with co-parenting now, mm-hmm. like what makes you feel good, you know, but that takes a while for a lot of people to get there. So if this year you're like, screw him and the horse he rode in on, I am not being flexible. That was another thing we talked about last night. Right. Like just follow your parenting that's plan. Right. You don't have to be amicable and ice skating together on Christmas day, just because it sounds nice to the outside world. All you have to do is follow your parenting plan this year. Absolutely. And maybe next year you'll be in a different place. And I, and I talk about this a lot because people are always like, oh my God, you know, your relationship with your ex-husband. I'm like, look, first of all, it has gone through 13 years of changes, right? And we started off mm-hmm. like super close and doing mm-hmm. everything together. And that was, by the way, a train wreck. And I do not recommend it because it crashed and burned really quickly. So I actually recommend that people take as much separation as possible and possibly even do more, more parent parallel parenting than co-parenting in the beginning so that you can sort of, Mm -hmm. so you have space to create your own traditions. You have space. Well, yeah. And also, Mm -hmm. so you have space to heal. Like it's very hard. One of the two people in a divorce is always going to be more hurt than the other. And when you have the less hurt person saying, let's be model co-parents and take the kids to see the Rockettes this week together. Mm -hmm. And you have Mm -hmm. one who's still reeling that will backfire because that's going to trigger all sorts of emotions. And someone's going to say something they don't mean or shouldn't have said. And I agree with you on that whole, 
parallel parenting in the yep. beginning. And the, you know, the other thing is that it can be really confusing to the kids. And this is, you know, I made this mistake. So I'm sort of sharing from, from the mistake that I made, which is that what happened for us was like, we split up. Um, I moved out in May. And so that Thanksgiving, we had Thanksgiving together. And, you know, my son was really little. He was three and a half when we split up. And I think he was four by that Thanksgiving. But, you know, the line that we had used was like, mommy and daddy have a hard time getting along. And so it's better that we're going to be, we're going to be still be a family. We're just going to be a different kind of family. We're not going to live together anymore. Um, but we both still love you and, you know, the blah, blah, blah. Right. And so by Thanksgiving, mommy and daddy were getting along really well. <laughs> <laughs> and mommy and daddy knew. So what's going right. on now? You guys so now are we're going to get back together, together right? And yeah. so mommy and daddy knew that the reason that we were getting along was because we got divorced. But as far as my <laughs> four-year-old was concerned, cool. Now we're getting along. So let's yeah. get back together. And when we had that Thanksgiving together, he was acting out so badly until we were finally like, what's going on? And I was like, is it hard for you that we're here together? And he was like, yes. Now you're getting along. So get back together, get undivorced. And we were like, oh, fuck, poor bud. It, you know, it goes one of two ways for kids. I think, you know, like we put so much pressure on ourselves as co-parents to want to do something all together because we think the kids are going to like it. I didn't share this photo, but this weekend, my daughter had her soccer tournament and she got her trophy and me and my ex jumped in for a picture with her together. And him and I look so happy and her face <laughs> yes. in the picture. She's like, yes. literally like looks terrified. Like what yep. is happening here? And I think that just goes to show that once kids have had to like separate us in their minds, it's really hard for them to see us hanging it's out really again. It's really confusing. My, you know, my, we now spend a lot of time together. My ex is remarried and like, we've been divorced for so long that it's like not that big a deal. Like we do share holidays, but he's my ex is with a new is with his wife that he's been with for 10 years. So it's not that confusing, but what is confusing to Emmett is, uh, I remember a couple of years ago, we had to get his passport, uh, renewed or something and we had to go together. Right. Cause that, that's a thing. And so we went together and then we were like hungry. And so we went and had lunch. And as we were leaving the restaurant, Emmett was like, this is really weird. You guys, he's like, I never <laughs> spend time with just my parents. And then we were like, oh man, huh? He's like, it's always like dad and bet because he's got a half brother and a stepbrother now at his dad's house. Right. And so like the, just the three of us never spend time together alone. And he was like, this is really weird. <laughs> so for anybody who feels the pressure to like have that happy co-parenting holiday card, it's so not necessary and so not what kids need to feel That's okay right. during That's the right. holidays. I'll tell you yes, what they, what do they need. need tell us what they need. They need to not feel the mm -hmm. weight of your sadness or unhappiness this holiday season, just because the dynamic in your home changed. Children still, I think, deserve, well, they, I know they deserve to still have the holiday season the way they would expect to if you were right. together. Um, you know, I think we are such well-intentioned and well-meaning mamas when we kiss our kids and say goodbye as they go off to the other parent. And sometimes we say things that could help them feel not so good. And in, in terms of getting excited to go see the other parent for the holidays, like, Oh, mommy's going to miss you so much. Mommy will be here. And, you know, I'll just be here. So if you miss me, call me cause I'll miss you. Yeah, you know, like right. those things do not make a child feel good. And if you're a first timer, it's so innocent that you would say that obviously you're not trying to hurt your child or alienate the other parent. You're just expressing your emotions, but I learned things the hard way a lot of times and all of those I miss use to my daughter actually affected her in a negative right. way. And I think it's important to remember that during the holiday season. The other thing is if you're dealing with a high conflict person and you'll know this, they tend to become more emotional mm. during Ugh, holiday times. About it. And so Ugh. it's never too late to put your phone on silent or mute that mofo, as I like to say, because <laughs> mute that mofo. The, the heaviness of being alone during the holidays, coupled with now I'm being attacked by my angry ex is very difficult to take. Absolutely. Mute that mofo for sure. 
Mute mm-hmm. that mofo. That's, That's right. my new slogan for 2022. I'm having it printed up. Don't don't forget it. Everybody mute that mofo. It's a game changer. I love it. I love it. Can we trademark that? You're going to trademark that? <laughs> <laughs> Obviously. Obviously. Yeah. I mean, you know, my ex has the very sort of like you know, the, the navel gazing narcissistic sort of, you know, woe is me thing. Right. Which doesn't necessarily mm-hmm. come off as anger or he's not like needling, but it, but suddenly we all have to stop and take care of him. Right. And so, and I mm-hmm. think that's a similar dynamic, right? Your job at this juncture is to take care of yourself and your children, period. End of story, right? It is not your fucking job yep. to take care of their emotional well being during the holidays. There are plenty of other people in their lives to be able to do that. So, and just because it's the holiday season does not excuse poor or abusive behavior. Mm -hmm. Like you are not a punching bag just because your ex is upset over the holidays and you need to keep that in mind. Absolutely. And now a word from our sponsor, me. Once you've decided to get a divorce, you may feel a sense of relief that the decision is finally made. But at the same time, you likely feel a sense of foreboding of what's ahead. There's a huge mountain left to climb. And if you've never gotten divorced before, especially divorced with kids, there's a lot that you don't know. You need a deep dive into the divorce process stat. That's exactly why I created the Divorce Survival Program. In the Divorce Survival Program, you'll learn how to have the most difficult conversations of your life with your husband, your children, friends, family, and even nosy neighbors. You'll learn to set healthy boundaries in high and low conflict divorces. You'll learn how the legal and financial processes really work, whether you should or can seek support, and you'll be taken through the process of emotional healing. And of course, you'll learn how and when to start dating on the other side. In this first-of-its-kind program, I bring together guest experts from around the country who share their wisdom in exclusive interviews not available anywhere else. In the Divorce Survival Program, I have conversations with legal and financial experts, child psychologists, sex and dating experts, and more. And of course, there are over 20 videos in which I speak directly to you, answering your most pressing questions questions. The Divorce Survival Program is a self-paced online program available for purchase now at the ridiculously low price of just $497. And there's a payment plan if you need it. Best of all, as a listener to the Divorce Survival Guide podcast, you get $50 off. Use the code DSGPOD at checkout and $50 will be taken off your purchase. Head on over to divorce survival program.com and sign up today that's divorce survival program.com and now back to our show what are some traditions that people can forge like what are some ideas how we can create new traditions i just think it's it's a matter of taking what is special to mm-hmm. you on that christmas eve or christmas day and implementing them on, during the time that you will be with your children, if you're not going to have them over the holiday season, if you are, and you know, the dynamic is different in the house. I think it's totally fine to start something different. You know, if Christmas morning was dad woke up early and made the pancakes, guess what? Mom's going to wake up and she's going to make muffins this year because this is a new year. And now we're having muffins. I think it's just the little things that put your spin or your touch on what's special to you. I don't think it needs to be much yeah. more than that. And it's, it's really just remembering that, like, you know, our friend, Susan Guthrie says divorce is an opportunity. Mm-hmm. And this right now, this holiday season is an opportunity for you to create something new for you and what your family looks like Absolutely. now. It doesn't have to be this big gaping hole. Like you can fill that hole with literally anything you want. I pulled all the women on my Instagram about, you know, their holidays this year and what they're doing now that they're alone. And like, most of them were like, I'm buying myself whatever the hell I want without getting in trouble for it. What do you mean? I'm so excited, Yes, you know, and it's, it's things like that. And even if it's not financial, it's, you know, my ex never wanted to watch sappy Christmas movies, but like now I can watch the holiday and eat gobs and gobs of snacks by myself and not have to feel bad about it, you know? So it's just, (laughs) it's those little things that mean something to you. You know, I know that for a couple of years, I was waking up alone on Christmas morning and I feel like 
I could deal with almost everything else, but waking up alone on Christmas morning was, was, was hard. It's hard, Heavy. right? Like, yeah. and I don't want to, I don't want to step over the fact that, it, that these things can be actually legitimately painful and hard. Absolutely. Right? Um, so what do you suggest for people who might be having those moments? So this is really the time for you to gather up your pride and call the people you actually like to spend time with. Everybody has that one friend that they drop everything for and vice versa. Let this be the year that you're like, Hey, if I have to sit home alone on Christmas morning and sob into my pillow, like it's going to be the end of me. Can I just come over in my pajamas and just be there? Even if I sit in a corner and don't talk to anybody, I, this is the time to invite yourself. This is the time to say, Hey, include me because I have news for you. All these people will say, well, no one's inviting me. And I feel left out because I'm not part of a couple anymore. Very often that happens because people don't know where you're at emotionally. And if you want to be included, so it's okay to invite yourself. You're not being pushy. You're being human by saying, Hey, I need connection right now. Don't forget about me. You know, and if, if somebody at work or a new friend happens to say, Hey, if you're not doing anything, come by, take them up on it. Like tis the season. Nobody's going to turn you Mm, away. I I love that. I love that because it really, people really don't know what to do. And also they're in their own thing. Even if like, if they have their family stuff, everyone is overwhelmed with the holidays. Everyone is feeling like they've got, you know, 6 million things happening and all the people that they're responsible for. Right. So to, Mm -hmm. to, to, expect that you are going to be the thing that they remember. Right. But as soon as you say, Hey, can I come over? Cause I really, I can't be alone. You know, that your close people are going to be like, Oh my God. Yes. Of course. Of course. We would love yes. to have you. Yes. Yes. So absolutely. don't be afraid to ask. Don't be afraid to reach out and don't be afraid. Yeah. New Year's Eve is also kind of like a, I have my own new year's Eve story for my first oh, year. Tell, like, can you tell us? I think that, yes. <laughs> so I got separated Mm -hmm. in March. So New Year's was way down the line and I was already dating my now Mm. husband, but he had his daughter that night and we were still very careful about how we, you know, I, I said, you guys do the thing that you would always do on New Year's. Like, don't worry about me. I don't want to change the plan, whatever. So they had their thing. Bella went away with her dad for the first time. She was two in diapers going on an airplane somewhere. I was a basket case. So no one really invited me to their new year's. I know everybody was doing like couples dinners and that hurt, but I also was too proud to say, can I third wheel? Like I, I just didn't want to do that to anybody because, you know, self, self, uh, uh, you know, me and my empowerment. Anyway, (laughs) um, I was too proud. So I lived in this, I lived in a townhouse and it's like this community where all the townhomes mm-hmm. are attached and like everything's on top of each other. And I just, ugh, from seven o'clock on, it was like people celebrating oh. and drunk and laughing and having so much fun. And I live in Miami. So everyone's outside, like having the best time. And I'm just like in my apartment, like with a, a salad bag, you know, that comes yeah. with a dressing and like a rotisserie chicken that I got for $5. Yeah. And I'm just like, could this get any worse? So I'm like, okay, it's not that bad. I'm going to pour myself a glass of wine and watch a movie. And then I was just like crawling out of my skin. So I forced myself to go to sleep. But of course, when you want to go to sleep, you can't go to sleep. And I didn't miss my ex. I missed Bella, but she wouldn't, she wouldn't have been awake Mm -hmm. anyway. So it wasn't that it was more this feeling of like, everybody is enjoying themselves and I'm fucking miserable right now. So I was trying to sleep and I couldn't all of a sudden the whole neighborhood explodes with happy new year uh-huh. at midnight. And I lost it. And I probably sobbed until six in the uh-huh. morning, but I'll tell you, I got up the next day. I shook it off. I put on my sneakers. I went to the beach to take a walk and I'm like, okay, like I got through yeah. it, you know? And that's what I tell women is like, as much as it hurts tonight yeah. in this moment, you're, you're going to wake up tomorrow morning. And there's a new day. There's always, and I love that you, you know, as painful as it is and all of that stuff, right. You, you, it's like, you cleansed yourself of it. You let yourself cry Mm -hmm. till six in the morning. I had to, yeah. I hadn't had a cry like that in the entire year leading up to that since I had been separated. Cause I was so like, 
I'm fine. Go, go, go. Let me take care of me and build my business and support my child. I didn't have time mm -hmm. for that. And I think there was this like misconception that because I was already in a relationship and had that going for me that like, I didn't need to be right. sad, but I yes. was sad for so many Absolutely. reasons. Absolutely. And that's okay. So and it's normal. If, if it were five years ago, all over again, I'd be inviting myself over to friends' yes. houses on New Year's to not yeah, be alone. Absolutely. And then if New Year's comes and you're like, shit, I don't want to be around happy couples. I'd rather be home. Fine. Be home. Like just do what feels yeah. right. There is no right or wrong answer for getting through the holidays after. Divorce. I remember shortly, it's like, I don't know, it was like a couple of years after my divorce and my best friend and her husband invited me to um, their Valentine's dinner. And they were going out to like this really nice restaurant in LA and they were like, come with us. And we were the only threesome table, table we're only three. the table, only table of three, probably <laughs> in all of Los Angeles. And we had more fun. They were like, that was that hands down that goes down in the history books is the best Valentine's day we've ever had. Uh, and we were the ones we were that. laughing. We we're having so much fun. All these other couples and these tables were like, you know, trying to you know, cause it's so manufactured and they're trying to have a nice time. And yeah. we were the ones having the best time. So, you know, don't be afraid to crash your friends twosomes. Cause sometimes they're like, they, they could use a little shakeup, right? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. And, and even something like Valentine's day, where you wouldn't think of like being with another couple, like yeah. When you're married for 15, 20 years, you've been having dinner every Valentine's day. It's not that big a deal exactly. anymore. That's why my friends were like, come on, let's do this. Uh -huh. <laughs> was... I love that for you. And I love that you had friends that would include yeah. you like that. I think that says a lot about oh, you. Thank you, honey. Yeah. I mean, I think that this is a, th this is a thing. I think there's that, that feeling left out of things that, that goes beyond holidays, right? I know it, it, I felt like that on weekends, like every other weekend when I didn't have my son, when he was younger, when everyone's doing family stuff and you're mm -hmm. not part of a family and you're the single mm -hmm. person and you're alone and like, they're off going to the zoo or the buddha, buddha, buddha. And you're just like you, cause because mostly your friends are parents, <laughs> other parents at that point. Right. Yeah. 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 That was hard for me. When, when I got separated, Bella was around the same age mm -hmm. as your son and every, all my friends were like pregnant with their second and third children and still taking pictures at the pumpkin patches. And, yep. you know, it was like that time where like you force your husband to be with you and the kids on the weekend because he worked all week. And right. so like, I remember like, oh, we're going to do family time today. I'll call you Monday. And I'd be like, okay. Like it was so hard, yeah. but what helped me was staying off of social media on the weekends. Mm, like it mm -hmm. was too hurtful to scroll my Facebook feed and just see all of these like forced, even though I knew they were forced and half these girls in these pictures had complained to me about their husbands for right. months or years <laughs> right. on end. To see it was like, oh, I don't have that. And, and it wasn't so much the man, it was the kids. I'm not with my child mm -hmm. this week and right. that sucks. But I'll tell you that the weekends that I do have Bella then and now, like they just get better and better and better because I value that time with her mm -hmm. so much. Yeah. And so that's like the strength that keeps you hanging on, yeah. I guess. So what else did you talk about in your, in your workshop last night about, so forging new traditions, spending time alone, asking to be included. What are some other things? Another thing that was really big for me and that comes up a lot um, in my DMs is the annoying things that people say to you, especially at family yeah. events after oh. divorce. So if you are spending the holidays with family, and this is the first time you've been surrounded by extended family who doesn't know about your split, there's a couple of things. Um, you know, it's not very joyous or merry to have to sit around a table and explain in detail your divorce settlement agreement and why you chose that or why you gave him the house or why he gave you that none like, of their fucking business just doesn't need to be <laughs> right. right obviously mm -hmm. but like you know people want to know and and sure. everyone's you know a voyeur so something i suggest is you know let's say you're going to your mom's house for dinner um but you're especially close with your aunt susie call your aunt susie a couple of days before and say hey look i'm a little anxious about dinner because I know my divorce is the elephant in the room, but I want it to be just that. Let it be the elephant in the room. I deserve to enjoy without the Spanish inquisition. And like, I, I just don't want to talk about it. Can you please let the family know? I don't care if everybody's freaking out in a group chat over it. Just 
don't make it the focus mm. of dinner. And I think it's perfectly okay to set that expectation and that boundary. And if somebody crosses the boundary, it's perfectly fine to say, hey, here to enjoy dinner. Can we not bring that up right now and move on to the next thing? Especially if your children are there. And maybe you do want to vent. Maybe you are just like, oh my God, cousin John, haven't seen you all year. I got to tell you what this mofo did. Do it mm -hmm. outside when your children are inside playing. Like kids pick up everything. on everything. And they hear and that, everything. Even if it's a sarcastic, yeah. Even if it's a sarcastic, like whatever, I, they know. And so just, if you got to talk about it, do it way far away from the kids. Yeah. And even then I would say, be really careful because there's always a window that they can, you know, hear through, they, they hear, they, they can hear a blade of grass moving, you know, when they want yes. to, it's, it's, they're bionic yes. when they're that age, when they're younger. Yes. But yeah, yeah, I love that. I love having, having your person, right. Because then that's the person who will run interference when necessary. Right. That's the person who will say, who will like quickly change the subject, right? When somebody, mm -hmm. yeah, everybody has that one person they can count that's on. That's exactly in the family. So, right. That's exactly right. And then I, I think we have to also talk about, and this is the last thing that I talked about in my workshop was moms get really intimidated when dad has, let's say more resources or just tends to be less cautious on how he spends money and is going to buy all of these lavish, crazy gifts for the kids and you're on a tight, strict budget, and now you're feeling less than because you can't give as much. I wrote an article on Dis, uh, you know, like the Disneyland dad, but Disneyland uh -huh, parenting yeah. to show why that's not important. Like, yes, kids love gifts. Like I bought my daughter for Hanukkah, this ginormous LOL dollhouse that she had to have. She talked about it all year. She probably played with it right. three times. Sure. You know what I'm yep. saying? So don't forget that, yes, kids love sparkly, shiny things, but they also love the inside of a cardboard box just as much. Do what feels good for your children. Don't worry about keeping up with your ex and what he's buying and spending because it, it will become a vicious cycle you'll never be able to get out of. Stay true to who you are. Your kids are going to grow up and never remember what you gave them, but they'll always remember how you made them Ugh, feel. I love that. And you know, I have to say too that, you know, I grew up quite, quite poor. Um, I, my mom was a single mom, zero support from my dad at the time. And we were in like New York city and she was an actress putting herself through grad school. So like, you know, my mom often talked to me about like, we can't afford, we can't afford, we can't afford, we can't afford. Cause we couldn't afford anything. And that became a bit of a, like, it was too much, right? She was, it was mm -hmm. too, too much. And so I was really cautious when I was raising my son because his dad had a lot and I did not, I was, you know, I definitely had, I had child support and, but you know, I was, I was starting from scratch when I got divorced and there was a disparity in our incomes. And I was honest with that about, you know, to, about that to my son, right. To say like, Hey, you know, dad, dad makes more money than I do. So I can't afford to do these mm -hmm. things without it being, I think as my mom will sort of, I think went too far. But I think it's perfectly acceptable to, to teach children the value of a dollar and say, you know, I love that daddy can afford to do that for you. That's really wonderful. Unfortunately, I don't make as much money. And so, you know, this is what I can do and, and, and make it, make it special, but also, you know, make it clear. Absolutely. Listen, my child, her dad is awesome. Like he takes her everywhere. I don't want to go. They went fishing yesterday. I'm never taking right. her fishing ever, ever. And I made that joke yeah. on the phone when she FaceTimed me with the fishing pole and this giant fish hanging off of it. I'm like, why don't you give your daddy a big old hug and a kiss right now and say, thank you because mommy ain't never doing that. <laughs> and, and they both right. laughed, yeah. you know, like we're each good for our exactly. own thing. I'll tell you that mine has much fun at the park up the block from my house as she does front row at Disney on ice mm -hmm. with her dad, mm -hmm. you know, and no, that's and fine. We forget that about kids. The simple things make them very happy too. That's exactly too. right. That's exactly right. And then as things change, you know, I remember my, my son would be like, oh, I noticed that we did this thing. Does that mean like he got actually really invested in my business? He's like, oh, I noticed we did this thing, mom. Does that mean that like your business is doing well? I'm like, yeah, it is actually. And, you know, so he, he sort of got invested and was like, you know, curious about it. <laughs> and, you know? Yeah. When my box of, when my box of books was uh. delivered, like the, the pre-sale copies, yeah. Bella was like, mommy, you're on a yeah. book. 
And I'm like, yeah. yeah. And she's like, does that mean we're going to yeah. be rich? <laughs> like she whispered it, you know, uh-huh. like an old lady uh-huh. would. And I was like, here's home. Yeah, right. <laughs> she just, she was like, does that mean like, like she was thinking like water park and Disney world and this and that. I'm like, one step at a time. <laughs> yeah, slow down, slow down trigger. Oh my goodness. So, all right. Anything else that, I mean, I feel like there are so many things that come up for people during the holidays, but it's actually, and it's, and it's quite complex, but it's actually also quite simple, right? That it's quite, I was just going to say, don't mm-hmm. overthink it. If you're listening to this and you're not feeling stressed and you're feeling more relieved than heart sick, good for you. Lean into whatever it is that you're feeling and embrace it because whether it's good or bad, it's going to pass. It's just a season, a very short season, and it'll be over before you know it. And you'll be setting new year's resolutions. And, you know, you'll look back and you'll say, you got through the firsts. The firsts are definitely always the hardest. Um, and, and you move forward. I mean, that's really all there is to it. And speaking of your box of books, you have a book coming out soon. I do. This is so exciting. The day it comes out will be exactly a year from the date that I shot the cover. So it's feeling like it's been a long time. <laughs> I know, Kate. I know, honey. I'm itching. I know, over honey. Here. You know, I mean, I got my book deal like in August and I'm, you know, I mean, it's forever. It's forever. 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 Hurry up and yeah. wait. So, yeah. um, so mom's moving on the name of the book, the name of the podcast, the name of the Instagram, the name of everything. She has everything. Mom's um, moving on. It's real life. Real life advice on conquering divorce, co-parenting through conflict and becoming your best self. And it's about 30 chapters of literally everything you need to prepare yourself for as you're going through divorce with children. I wrote it because it was sort of like the handbook I wish I had when I got separated. Mm -hmm. We talk about everything from surviving the first night without your kids, surviving the first weekend, what happens when friendships change, why might they change, how to handle that co-parenting through conflict. If you have a high conflict X, or if you just can't let go of your anger, both happen, both are normal, just every little thing until that point where you feel like you're waking up a different Mm -hmm. human. That's, that's the journey this book will take you on. And I'm really excited about it. And I hope that it reaches everybody it needs to reach because it's, you know, it's so challenging to do this by yourself and not know what to expect. So this is the, what to expect when you're expecting for divorcing. Mamas. Yes. I love it. I love it. So it would be a really good thing for people to buy themselves uh, a pre-order pre-order. Cause you, it's not available yet, but it is available for pre-order on your website it's available for pre-order. And on Amazon. It's on Amazon. It's on Barnes and Noble. It's on the Simon and Schuster website, but you can just find a link on my website, momsmovingon.com. Um, there will be an audiobook, and it will be available in other countries. I get that question a lot. I just don't know the exact timeline right. of that. So yes. stay tuned. So it would be a really good idea for you guys to pre-order that for yourselves as your mm-hmm. Christmas present to mm-hmm. yourself, because we mm-hmm. want to, we want to also, you know, moms, we tend to think about, you know, taking care of everybody else. And as part of this process of taking care of yourself is that, you know, I, I'm suggesting that everyone buy themselves a gift, whether it's a bouquet of flowers, a single flower, a, you know, whatever, whatever is it within your means. And so I think that pre-ordering Michelle's book is a really would be a great gift for yourselves. Thank you. Yeah. And also, you know, for a friend, Mm -hmm. like it's, I think it's such a great gift. Everyone's always like, what's a good gift for my friend who's getting divorced? Uh-huh. Like, what are you going to send an ed- edible right. arrangements? <laughs> like, here's your fruit. <laughs> Sorry about your divorce. I think like, this is, this would probably be more helpful. Just maybe just I'm saying, biased, no. but I'm just saying. I think you're absolutely yeah. right. <laughs> Don't send me cantaloupe open the shape of stars, please. Thanks. No shame to edible arrangements. I love them, but like not a good divorce gift. That's hilarious. Michelle Dempsey Meltag, where can everybody find you? I'm on Instagram at the Michelle Dempsey and my website is momsmovingon.com. We have a wonderful online membership community, which now has an app and we're all connected all the time, sharing, talking, reporting, asking questions. The podcast is also Moms Moving On and that streams everywhere podcasts are available. And yeah, the book and, and me, that's, that's all there is. <laughs> that's all. It's a lot. You do so much it's and a lot. you are an incredible sh- bright shining star in this world. And we are all lucky to have you as are you lady. And, um, 
if you're listening, spoiler alert, just go check out my podcast. Cause in like a few days time, you'll be able to hear Kate being interviewed by yeah, me. We, you know, we share sharesies. <laughs> <laughs> yep. Awesome. Thanks. Love. Happy holidays to everyone. Thanks for tuning in to another episode of the divorce survival guide podcast. If you like what you hear, head on over to Apple podcasts or wherever you listen in and leave me a review. And don't forget to follow me on Instagram at the divorce survival guide. I'll see you next time. And until then, remember you, my love deserve to be happy.